been asking me to cover the playing style of Chris Buck on this channel for quite some time now and I've finally caved in so here we are in this video I'm going to teach you guys a few things that you can learn from the incredible lead playing style of Chris Buck. I reached out to Chris not too long ago to ask if he would be okay with me making this video and not only was he totally happy for me to do it but he also provided me with the backing track for the Buck and Evans tune Slow Train which is what you heard me playing over at the start of the video. Now if you want to learn a solo for that song I believe that Chris actually has a lesson about it on his YouTube channel which I will leave a link to in the description box beneath the video. Now what stands out in Chris's lead playing the most, at least to me, is his mastery of incorporating grace notes into his lead lines, particularly with the use of bends and slides. Now if you don't know what a grace note is, it's basically a note that isn't exactly essential to a particular melody or musical phrase but that can be used to embellish one. For example, I'm gonna play a very simple phrase here with no embellishments, and then I'm gonna add in a grace note with a slide the second time that you hear me play it. You see what I did there? Before I played this note, the note A on the D string, the second time that I played it, I actually added in a grace note slide from one fret above that and I slid down into that note. So that's what a grace note might sound like. Now, that note right there, it's played so rapidly that you don't really even hear the pitch of it. It's more just like borrowing time from the rhythmic value of this note here. So that's a good way to think about grace notes. They don't have any real rhythmic value, it's more that they're borrowing time from notes that are essential to the melody or phrase that you're playing. And Chris is just an absolute master at incorporating these grace notes into his playing in various different ways, which we're gonna look at right now. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna teach you guys a scale run that I've come up with over the song Slow Train that I think sounds very Chris Buck-like and kind of ties all of these different grace note types together. So I've split these grace note types down into uh, four separate ones. So first one would be descending slides, the second one would be ascending slides, the third would be trill slides, and the fourth is something that I'm calling the index finger bend and slide. So let's get started with descending slides. So the descending grace note slide is basically what I demonstrated at the start of the video when I was talking about what a grace note actually is. Um, so this is the phrase that we're playing here. Without the grace note slide, it would sound like this. But what I'm doing there is I am embellishing that phrase just slightly with a grace note slide, a descending grace note slide from fret eight down to fret seven on the D string. And that note at fret eight is the flat five of the blues scale. Now the flat five of the blues scale is always a great choice for adding in a descending grace note slides because it's only one fret higher than the perfect fourth. And therefore, it's very accessible for this technique for adding in grace notes. Now, you could also play that slide from two frets higher from the perfect fifth of the scale. But either way, when you're practicing it, if you're doing it from the flat five or the perfect fifth, make sure to perform that slide very rapidly so that you're not giving it too much rhythmic value uh, in the phrase. You don't want it to sound like this. It needs to be snappy, it needs to be a lot faster than that. So that you're 
barely hearing the pitch of the actual note that you're sliding from. Now let's move on to ascending slides. So without the grace note here, this is the phrase that we're dealing with. And the ascending slide is applied to the very first note there. So I'm going to slide into that note. Now, if you watch me play that there, there isn't really a specific fret that I'm sliding from. I'm more just sort of starting low on the fretboard and kind of ramming my way into that note. And I'm very comfortable at doing that because these types of grace notes are, are things that I've been doing in my playing for years now. So it does feel comfortable to me. But if you're brand new to this, it probably won't feel as comfortable. So what you want to try practicing is just attacking that note with the slide from just two frets below, like so. And the more comfortable you get doing that, the more comfortable you'll eventually get, you know, attacking it from lower on the fretboard. So far we've covered descending and ascending grace note slides, which are both prominent characteristics of Chris's lead playing. Next, we're gonna look at something called trill slides. Trill is a musical term for a rapid alteration between two notes that are usually a semitone or a tone apart. So for guitar players on one string, this of course means the distance of just one fret for a semitone or two frets for a tone. Now in the phrase that you just heard, if I play it without the trill, it would sound like this. With the trill, it sounds like this. So watch what I do there when I pick that first note, that first A note. I'm performing a trill there on that A, I'm sliding up to the flat 5 of the scale very briefly and then back down to the note A. That rapid alternation between the 4th and the flat 5 of the scale. That's what a trill is and it's something that you'll hear a lot of in Chris's playing. If you listen to his solo on Slow Train, there's a part that goes like this. And in that passage that I just played there, there's actually two different trills going on. One here. That would be on the ninth of E, which is a note F sharp. It's going up to the flat third of the scale and then back down to the ninth. And then it goes up like this. And right there, that's a trill that he's playing there. From again, from the fourth up to the flat five and then back down to the fourth. The last type of Chris Buck style grace note that we're going to look at in this video is something that I've called the index finger bend and slide. So here's what that sounds like. combination of a semitone bend followed by a trill played with the index finger is something that I've only ever seen Chris Buck do. Um, I'll often combine bends and slides like this in my own playing but I'm usually doing it with my third finger like this. Chris was the first guy that I saw going like this. 
Now, what's cool about this is that you're hearing the same note played twice in rapid succession, but in different ways. So he starts out with a semitone bend from the ninth of the scale, which is the note F sharp. So you're gonna bend that up by a semitone so that you're reaching the pitch of the note G. Okay, and with that bend held in place, you are then gonna slide your index finger up to, the, to fret eight, which is the note G. So here how you're, you're hearing the note G twice there, but the first time it's with a bend, and the second time it's an actual fretted G. And once you've slid into that note, you're gonna slide back down to fret seven, which is the note F sharp. So I'm going to play that phrase without the slide, without the trill, and then I'm going to play it with it added in so that you can hear the difference between the two. Both of them sound good, but to my ears I prefer adding in that little trill, adding in that slide, it just embellishes it in a really nice way. All right, so we've looked at four different types of grace note that Chris Buck likes to use in his lead playing. And as promised at the start of the video, I'm gonna take you guys through a scale run that I've come up with over the track Slow Train that kind of pulls all of this together. So here's what it goes like. So let's break that scale run down into three separate parts and I'll talk about the specific grace notes that I've applied to each part of this lick. So here's part one. So in this first part, we've got two ascending slides and one trill slide. So the first ascending slide is the very first note, we're gonna slide into the note B. Again, if you're brand new to this, just try that from two frets lower from the note A. Then we've got a trill slide that happens on the D string. Again, that's uh, incorporating the flat five of the blues scale there. And the second ascending slide is again on the note B, but this time an octave higher on the D string. So we come out of that trill and then play a grace note slide up into the note B, like so. So to pull all of that together, we started with the ascending slide into the note B. Then we had our trill slide on the D string, going to the flat five of the E blues scale. And then another grace note ascending slide into the note B and octave higher on the D string. Here's the second part of the scale run. So in this part, we start out with the index finger bend and slide, which we've already gone over. So that's when you're bending from the note F sharp up to G, sliding into that note and then sliding back down to the note F sharp. And at this point here, you're gonna add a trill slide to this note. Again, that's another case of sliding into that flat five of the blue scale. That's what that note is that you're sliding into. 
then to finish the this part of the of the scale run, you're going to perform a position shift like so. Okay, so that was part two. Let's combine that with part one. The final part of the scale run goes like this. So there's a bit less going on in this final part. We've just got one grace note here and it's on the very first note. We've got an ascending slide into the note F sharp. And then from there, Kind of just descending uh, the E minor pentatonic or the E natural minor scale and then landing on the note C because that's when the, the chords in the backing track change to C. So let's combine that with parts one and two of the scale run. I'll play it a couple more times for you guys. One slowly and then to tempo. today's lesson. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this one and if you're brand new to incorporating grace notes into your playing, into your lead playing in this way and you want something to practice, you want to go a bit further with the stuff that we've covered in this video, I have added some grace note exercises to the extra section of my website bulletproofguitarplayer.com. So if you're already signed up with a subscription plan then you have instant access to that content. If you're interested in signing up to my website, the link is of course in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Please like it, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next one.